11.8 is vectors. And vectors are going to work uh, just like uh, regular rectangular coordinates, uh, but we're also going to look at them in polar coordinates. So we're going to start with rectangular coordinates. And <clears throat> there's two types of notation you're going to see vectors written in. So let's start with that. So the first is what I call diamond bracket notation. And this looks a lot like uh, points with parentheses. So see the x coordinate written first and the y coordinate written second. And this is in uh, two dimensions. So again, this symbol right here means is an element of and we are in two-dimensional space here so we could write it as r times r or r2 and if we have a three uh, dimensional vector we're well, going to use z as the next letter and that would be an element of r3 or r times r times r uh, you've seen R2 before, I've probably mentioned this, but it's just referring to the coordinate plane where you have an X, Y axis. Uh, it's very difficult to graph in three dimensions. Usually, uh, usually you avoid that completely if you have to. Um, well, we're not gonna graph in three dimensions. So you can imagine at least the Z axis coming out of the paper or screen, uh, but it's the third dimension there. So it'll be the one going up and down. But again, graphing in three dimensions is pretty useless, so we're going to try to avoid it whenever possible. And so in two dimensions, if you just have an x, y, uh, some coordinates, your vector, normally we're going to uh, draw a point here, but with vectors, <clears throat> it is the arrow from the origin to your point. And that's the difference between vectors and just regular points. So vectors, you want to think of as an arrow. That is diamond bracket, and you can use uh, I, J, K notation. Let me use some actual numbers in here. Let's just say this vector is uh, three, two. So it would be three comma two. I don't know why I'm erasing the three dimensional vector. We'll leave that alone. So this will be three, Two. Now the same vector written in IJK notation would be written as 3i plus 2j. Now i basically is a placeholder and so is j and what you see in front of the i is the x coordinate and what you see in front of the j is the y coordinate. And if you're in three dimensions you would see plus some more k. So that's the difference between the two notations. I generally prefer diamond bracket. So I'm going to stick to diamond bracket most of the time. So the first thing we're going to do is graph. And for variables, for names of vectors, we're going to use uh, letters like uh, U and V and W. So we use uh, letters near the end of the alphabet. I want to try to avoid using X, Y, and Z because I want to use those for coordinates, not vectors. So think of a vector as uh, multiple coordinates uh, grouped together. So you got two dimensional, you know, two coordinates or three coordinates. All right, so we're going to graph, let's just graph two, negative two. So we're in rectangular coordinates, go right to, then down to. So we're used to putting a point down there, but remember we're graphing vectors. So vector will be the arrow going from the origin to this point right here. The vector is the arrow from the origin to
the point. So arrow is kind of a silly word. Uh, the other word you can use if you want a, a more descriptive word is a displacement. So we just grab the vector, and now we'll talk about, uh, let's do ma uh, magnitude and modulus first. So sometimes you're gonna see this referred to as modulus. And this is the length of the vector. So notation. One way to write it is uh, just like absolute value with vertical bars. Another way you're gonna see it written is double vertical bars. So there's one way and there's the other way. And now our vector, if we're in two dimensions, so our vector would be, uh, these letters A and B for the two coordinates. All right, so how do we compute this? Let's think about the magnitude of this vector we just drew up here. So if I asked you, what is the magnitude or the length of this vector? So we need to figure out basically what's that measurement right there. So it's definitely not two, it's more than two. How do we figure out this measurement? Well, what we're gonna do is think about how much X do we go and then how much Y and use Pythagorean theorem to get the hypotenuse, also known as the uh, magnitude or modulus. So we're gonna take our two coordinates, you're gonna square them, so it's a squared plus b squared, square root. So that's the formula for the magnitude. And if your vector, let's say you had a vector u, was in three dimensional space, then the vector would be Uh, written with three coordinates, A, B, and C. And then the magnitude of U would be the square root A squared plus B squared plus C squared. I usually prefer to write less, so I'm going to use the single bar notation way more than I'm going to use the double bar notation. So let's go ahead and do this example. What's the length of the vector we just looked at? So two, negative two, there's the coordinates. All right, so let's start out with some big mistakes. All right, so this is what not to do. Square root two, uh, two squared plus negative two squared. All right, so the first big mistake you can make is not squaring the negative. So obviously the negative two should be squared to be a positive two, a uh, positive four, not a negative four. So that's the problem here. So make sure all your terms are positive. All right, the other big mistake is actually trying to do the absolute value. So this is definitely not positive two, positive two. So those are two uh, common errors that I see. So make sure you're not doing uh, those. All right, let's find this the right way. So what do we do? We take each coordinate and square them. Now it looks like I made a mistake and didn't write negative in front of that second two right there. But whenever you're getting magnitude, remember you're gonna be squaring each coordinate. So if it was negative, when you square it, that negative is going to become positive. So I recommend don't even bother writing a negative here. So just write uh, you know, four plus four 
which is square root eight. And if you want to, uh, this is two cubed, so you could write it as two square root two. I'm gonna leave it with just square root eight though. So there's our first uh, magnitude example. And now we'll talk about addition, uh, subtraction, and scalar multiplication. All right, so with addition, it's probably the easiest operation. <clears throat> I'm going to do these problems in two dimensions. If you're doing them in three dimensions, I showed you how to get modulus in three dimensions right here. Uh, if you're going to add or subtract in three dimensions, you do the same thing that we do with the first two coordinates. You just also do it with a third coordinate. All right, addition, we'll take uh, V to be AB and you will use C, D. So how do we add U plus V? All you do is add the X coordinates and add the Y coordinates. That's it, add the x's, add the y's, and then you, you still have a vector, same dimensions that you started in. So that's how to add, and subtract is almost exactly the same. The only difference is you're going to still match up the two x coordinates, but you're gonna be taking uh, the first one minus the second one. So in this case, it's c minus a. And the second will be D minus B. So that's addition and subtraction. And now we'll look at scalar multiplication. So it's important to see this word scalar multiplication. We're going to see some other ways to multiply vectors but they are not going to uh, be very similar to what we're gonna be doing here. So this scalar multiplication, we'll take uh, the same vector, V will be AB, and scalar. All right, so what is a scalar? Well, a scalar is, for our purposes, is gonna be a real number. We're gonna use Greek letters for scalars. So alpha is a real number. So we got a vector and a scalar. We're gonna multiply them together. We write it just like if it was two variables. Um, with regular multiplication, you just write one next to the other. I wanna warn you, don't really wanna use a dot because we're gonna be using dot very soon to mean the dot product, which is very different than uh, multiplying a vector by a number. All right, so how do we multiply a times v, or I should say alpha times v, which is a, b. You're gonna basically just distribute. This is alpha a, oops. We're gonna get the vector that is alpha a, comma alpha b. So you're taking your scalar and you're distributing it. So we're gonna do one example of uh, multiplication and addition. When you're doing algebra, you can really um, go in any order, but when you're doing arithmetic, you really need to uh, follow this order. And this is uh, arithmetic. However you spell that word. Arithmetic, you uh, need to follow order of operations. Why it's important here, the very last thing we're gonna be doing is subtracting. So we need to take care of these scalar multiplications first, so we can distribute. Two times three is six. And two times five, 10. Now over here, you have a choice. You could distribute the negative with the four. So if I do that, uh, that's negative 24 comma positive eight. Now if I distribute the negative, 
this is going to be added together. I could distribute just positive 4, and then this would stay minus right here. So I just went ahead and distributed the negative. So 6 minus 24 is 18. And 10 plus 8 is coincidentally 18. And this is our uh, final vector right here. So we're going to go over some uh, uh, magnitude properties now. So first thing, no matter what, your magnitude is never going to be less than zero. You can get zero magnitude, and um, we'll look at that next. But overall, there's no way to get a negative number out of the magnitude. So what happens if you know your vector's magnitude or length is zero? So let's draw a vector that has a magnitude zero. There it is. Not very exciting. Uh, any vector that has magnitude zero better not go anywhere. So there's really only one vector that has magnitude of zero. It's also known as the zero vector. So the zero vector, we are going to write it as zero. But the problem is if you just see zero, you uh, would need to know is this the number zero or the vector zero. The way we're going to remedy this problem is we're going to write a bold zero. Oh, I get to color it in. All right, so this right here will be the vector zero. So in two dimensions, what does this look like? Zero, zero. So this is in R2, in R3. And the fast way to draw the zero vector, just do two loops, or if you really want, you can do a third loop. So the three-dimensional zero vector is zero, zero, zero. All right, next property, the magnitude. So in this property, it actually acts just like absolute value. So what's happening here? Well, if you have some vector v, what is negative v? It's negative 1 times v. And visually, it goes in the other direction. So it points in the opposite direction. So if that vector is v right there, what is negative v going to look like? The opposite direction. And it goes the exact same length or magnitude. So that's what, how you get this equality right here. Just points in the other direction, has exact same magnitude. All right, so a very useful property here. If you multiply a vector by a scalar and then take the magnitude, that's the same as the absolute value of the scalar multiplied by the magnitude of the vector. And I'm going to write that down. So this is the absolute value of alpha and over here this is the magnitude of V and they're being multiplied together and last one this is more vo vocabulary when magnitude v is equal to the number 1, what type of name will we call a vector who has a magnitude of 1? Well, that makes me think of the word unit, or uni. So this is called a unit vector. So if your vector has magnitude 1, it's a unit vector.